All this week, we're taking you to the world's northernmost and fastest warming community of Svalbard, Norway. After meeting the people who live there and seeing what scientists are learning there, you will better understand what's happening where we live. This is On The Dot with me, David Schechter. So how much will sea levels rise in the United States? And to help predict that, scientists are measuring how fast glaciers are melting in the Arctic. David Schechter shows us how dramatically the ice there has changed. Welcome to the Neolison Research Station, just 700 miles from the North Pole. Countries from all over the world send all kinds of researchers here to study the high Arctic and how it's changing. Along with support staff, they live together, work together, and eat all of their meals together. What happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Jack Kohler works for the Norwegian Polar Institute, a government agency that studies and monitors the Arctic. He's taking me to see the glacier that he's been studying for 27 years. I can say that this is about where the front of the glacier was in 1996, the first time I came here. And uh, now the glacier front is, as you can see, quite far away, almost four kilometers distant, two and a half miles, for the American audience. At its front, the glacier is taller than a 15-story building and almost two miles wide. In just the past two years, the glacier has gone from here in 2021 to here in 2022, and now it's here in 2023. What's lost is like eight football fields. That's what's happening now, but look what researchers found when they compared photos taken about 100 years ago. So what I really try to communicate to people is that a drop of water that melts in Svalbard doesn't disappear off the face of the planet. It goes to the ocean, and the ocean is, covers the whole planet. And so when we melt ice in the Arctic, it goes to sea level rise. 42% of sea level rise comes from warming ocean water, which expands as it warms. 21% comes from melting glaciers around the world, 23% from melting ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica. What does that mean in the U.S.? Well, sea level rise projections over the next 30 years anticipate 10 to 14 inches of rise on the East Coast, 14 to 18 on the Gulf Coast, and 4 to 8 inches on the West Coast. Sea level is inexorably rising, and glaciers are contributing very significantly to that. Some days you're grinding it out in the office, and others you're buzzing around in a Norwegian Coast Guard helicopter and landing on a glacier. When the ice was at its peak at the end of winter, Jack drove a series of stakes deep into the ice. Now, six months later, after the summer melt, we're measuring how much of the stake is exposed. In April, it would, the ice surface would have been around here. So really? that, so that much ice has melted during the summer. Really? Yeah. So this was, this was buried in ice. bored into the ice. Yeah. And now it's all exposed. And now it's exposed. Oh my gosh. Uh, the problem is when there's uh, less winter precipitation up there, and then that large amount of, of melting means that there's a overall loss. Then the uh, glacier thins and, and, and retreats. And your records are showing that it's, and this one it's is, just going down. This one is, is thinning overall. Online now, continue our adventure in Norway on this special interactive webpage. Watch our full-length documentary and learn how climate change is impacting communities right now across our country. In the city of San Francisco, the risk of flooding in the next 20 years could impact more than 600 people. That number could increase by nearly three times by the end of the century if we continue our current course of greenhouse gas emissions. This new data comes from the Climate Impact Lab, a collaborative group of scientists and researchers. 